G'day, I'm Tim Thompson, and today I'm out near Mildura at a property called Swamp Dorpers. It's a 4,000 acre mixed grazing and cropping property where they're finishing off up to 5,000 head at a time for the meat market. This property is investing heavily in genetics to increase the quality of their stud and drive performance. Let's go and meet the owners, find out a little bit more about the operation, and then check out the technology that they're using to make all this possible. Steve, how are you, mate? Good, how are you? Good, thank good. you, Michael. Well, how, how are you, are you mate? Good, good. I noticed uh, stump out the front says little <laughs> bighorn. What's going on with that, Steve? <laughs> uh, a little bighorn. If people know their history, it's Custer's last stand, and I think that's it for me. This is your last stand. <laughs> this is my last stand. No you, more. You boy a, can do the rest. You've been a bit of an entrepreneur, haven't you? You've done, had a few operations over the time. Yeah, had a few operations over the time. Yeah, do lots of different things: garlic, vineyards, vineyards, uh, vegetables, and now stock. So right, we play with the stock now. So we're enjoying. It. I'm enjoying that part of it. Good on in you. the genetic side, in the breeding, it's very. Very yeah. mind gaming. Now you're feedlotting some first cross at the moment. Yep. yep. Um, but you've also got your Dorper stud that you're working on, and that's your main focus, isn't right. it? And then you've got Kalahari yeah, goats Kalahari as well. Yeah, Kalahari goats as a stud. Same thing. Performance in cross, cross and wilds, and yep. Which are both South African bred. The Kalahari and the Dorper and are the South Dorper. African, and they're all mild mannered and really easy to manage. And <laughs> that's how you treat them. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that because yeah. you've had some problems with the old equipment, and you're investing in new technology to help drive it further and make it easier to manage these, aren't you? Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So tell me a little bit about the farm that we've got here. It's about four thousand acres. Yep. Yep. Um, it was a little bit run down when you got hold yeah, of it. Yeah, when we bought it two years ago or two and a half years ago now. Yep. Um, basically started from scratch there was no fencing and all that so we've started from scratch really so that, that's that's been an investment cost but it's also meant that you could set this place up the way you want to yes hasn't it? Yeah, yeah it has been yeah. good in that way two advantages point is one you start with a blank sheet of paper and build yep. it what you want yep. the other one's taking over something that so that you don't suit you or you whatever you're doing at the you know different yeah. circumstances so yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it has suitors but the two years have been and that's why custer been is a challenge, in there. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> What's the plan in terms of how much land do you want to devote to cropping and how much do you want to devote to grazing and that sort of thing in the, in the long term? What's the vision? Um, we'll probably go more stock than cropping yep. in, in, the, in the plan anyway, so we'll, we'll see what it yeah. goes. But A bit of cropping mainly for feed for our own animals. So you, you know, you're to get supplying your own drought. feedlot? Yeah, yeah. basically yeah. get us yeah. through hard times as well yeah. when, yeah. when it yeah. gets dry here, which yeah, it does. Right yeah, and they're, they're predicting a little bit of dry coming, aren't they? They are. That's they it doesn't are. look like this morning, though. <laughs> no. doesn't. No, no. So how important for you is the maternal genetics? I mean, everyone always focuses on the ram. How much, how much importance is there for you in having the maternal genetics right? It makes a whole stud correct. If your girls are right, your rams are, are, are right. And that, yep. that takes you a good 10 to 15 years to get it correct. A lot of buying and trying and all yeah. that in bloodlines. Bloodlines yep. is major major thing in them. But you're seeing that as being a major cornerstone of your program, aren't you? Yes, yeah, it's yeah. one of our main goals. Main. Uh, the, the feedlot and the cropping is basically survival. Yes. You know, yep. to make it... Uh, so these sheep here are just keeping you ticking yeah, over? Yeah. It's just a money money situation where the Dorpers yep. are more our, uh, and the Calari are more our line we want to, you know, persist with. But with the infrastructure cost, it's, we've got to do something else to survive. What have been the challenges so far with... Um, Tracking your DNA in the sheep, what have, what have been the, the sort of the it, problems that you've had? It's been pretty good, except for the paperwork, putting the DNA onto the computer. But yep. like I said, once we get that sorted, I think it's a it's a must. It's a very good for the farm. Like It's a lot easier, a lot less work than tagging. Yeah, probably with stud, a lot of people don't realise you've got to match the you know, the, the kid with, with both parents. Yep. So you've got to have more pens or separate DNA. What that has done to us, we can run them in bigger paddocks more and it doesn't matter who does what the genetics when they come back you know the father and mother and that's very important you to run your genetic lines in, which cuts so your you, pens down yeah. which yeah. gives you more it, food a lot, lot easier yeah. to manage but it does take a bit of cost and uh getting it right setting it up well let's go and have a look at your yards yep. and see how you're setting this up yep and see how you're managing your dna to manage your flock 
Yep. And then I'm keen to see some of your Dorpers and some of your Kalahari. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Let's go right, have a look. So, Michael, we're here in the old yards. Yep. Um, and before we have a look at some of the challenges in the old yards, you've got a DNA test kit here. Yep. Can you walk us through a little bit about how this works and how you manage the process? Yep. In what is a big stud? How many how many animals did you start out by testing? We tested about a thousand animals to start off with. At nineteen bucks a pop. At nineteen bucks a pop. Yep. That's so that's a fair original, investment, isn't it? Yeah, it's get your original base yep. base on. Um, so you have got a little gun here. Yep, it's a little gun that we run through our PQ machine that grabs the animal. Yep. Um, then you pull that out, and all you do is a simple test as goes like that. And when yep. that green ball goes through in the ear, it cuts out. A little, little bit of the ear. Tiny chip of the ear. Yep. yep. And then we put it in this box and send it send it away. Yep. And it comes back with the DNA so we know all our ewes, our daughters, the lambs, the mother, the father, and it all gets put on the computer and goes to Stockport. So it saves you having to go through and tag twice a day. It saves me a lot of time in tagging animals. Yeah. Um, every day, watching them every night, as well as you can put more rams in one pen. Yep. So you can manage your farm a lot better in pen spaces yep. and stuff like that. It's it's definitely well worth it in its time. The yeah. money's worried, it's hundred percent accurate. Yeah, yep, you can't go wrong, doesn't matter if a ram lamb does get in and something goes wrong, it, that all doesn't matter where it used to you never know. Where this yeah, yeah. guarantees you what it is is what it is. So now you're not testing as many animals now, so it's no, becoming so, more economically viable. Yeah, it's more if well, now the start the, was hard. The start's hard and then once once you get the start, it's only whatever lambs you drop in a year, but in the middle of that, we get a South African judge that comes through and we get them all classed. So we're only doing our type fours and fives, all the rest go to a commercial flock. So yep. we're not, we're only probably DNA and 500 to 400 a year instead of probably a thousand. And as a result of that investment now, it's a more sustainable investment. Your yeah. your stud quality is just going up every up, single every, year for the characteristics you're hunting for. Yep, and you can pick barren ewes that haven't had lambs, you can pick a lot of things yep. and watch bud lines so much better by knowing what they're doing. If they're having twins, if they're having singles, if they're having triplets, it all comes back to the DNA. So Making fun out of farming. Yeah, well, a little bit of electronic work, but yeah, yeah. it is. It is yep. All right, well, let's have a look at these yards yep. and have a look at some of the challenges that they were presenting to you. Yep. And then we'll go over and have a look at your new, new yards. yards. And, and we've, got a, we've got a rep in here today who's setting the yards setting up and up, getting them so going well. <laughs> yep. No, yeah, no, very good. We All right, let's go. <laughs> right. So this is your old setup, mate. Yep. Um, we've got our uh, immobiliser here where yep. you were doing all your tagging and testing. Yep. Um, and there's been a few modifications that you've had to make to bring this up to code for dorpers. Yeah. Because they like yeah. to smash into things, <laughs> they don't do they? They do like to smash into things and jump things. So yep. what are some of the things that you've done? Not, this machine's been a very good machine. Um, we've extended these bars. They used to be back there. Right. Oh, so stop and raise here. Because they'll end up here. They won't yep. go through there. Yep. So that, this machine's been absolutely brilliant for dorpers on what we're seeing. They do yep. still smash it a bit, but we've had it for 10 years and haven't had a drama with it. So putting covers over the top, critical yep. of you using dorpers. Yeah, yep. What we've yep. found anyway, they just like to jump, or they like to get on top of each other. Yeah. And this is a just this comes with a machine, but just single one at a time. If not, they just keep running. Just they just like to push each other and run. That's what what they do. This is where we do probably most of our our work on our ewes. Yep. We bring them in here, it automatically scans them because we're all electronic tags. So you're a, using a Gallagher scanner yeah, there, Gallagher using a scanner panel scanner. And a and a panel panel reader. Um, yep. Works really well. We we also tells us all our we so one you goes in it can tell us our sire, the dam of it, the age of it, the weight, the last weight it come in. Yep. And then we draft off the bloodlines to suit our rams all by the three way draft. Yeah. So we we go through with that. It has been a very good machine. We've had a couple of hiccups with dorpers. They they like to bend it up a bit. So now this had, is this is the old one that you've got. This yep, is the this manual the drafter. Manual drafter. So you're literally on the on the yep. machine the whole day. So we've had to put a bar down the bottom to stop them pushing the doors forwards because right. our rams are under kilos just buckle that door. And they're not that well behaved. No, they don't like it at all. Um, just a bit of a roof over it to stop. Once they see a light or an out, they will try to get out. Yep. Um, other than that, it's been it's been really good. We think the element's probably a bit light because they do bend it, but other yep. than that, it has been a really good machine. This is where most of the work goes, but yep. we've we've upgraded now. You've upgraded significantly, haven't yeah, you? So we've so gone <laughs> we've gone for dorper proof now. Yeah, yeah. Let's go it's and have a look, look, at look at the dorper, dorper proof, proof and have yeah. a look at how you're now combining all of your genetics information along with the tags yep. in the one machine. machine. 
Yep. G'day Cindy, how are you? Good, thank you. You're the boss of this operation, aren't you? Because you look after all the data. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I try to. Do you think you've solved a few problems? Because so far it's been tricky for you with the old setup yes. to match the DNA to the tag. Yes. Do you reckon you've got it sorted with the well, new I'm system? Well, I'm hoping so, yes. You know, I didn't realise Otherwise could... Stephen's in trouble, isn't yes. he? Yes, <laughs> because he's told me this would work. Right. Yes, and so, I've, I've got quite a few that. to enter. If this doesn't work, he's going to be sitting in the office. So general custom might be in trouble after all. <laughs> <laughs> could be, could be. Oh, yeah. good on you. So I didn't realise that you could scan the um, actual DNA tube, testing tube, and the information would go by that. So yeah, that, that's, right. that's that been a, a help. So, so even though it's a different brand, this yep. machine's so smart, it will match the data. Yes. That's pretty cool, isn't it? It is, very. Save yeah. you a lot of time. Oh, yes, it Because you've got your I'll hands full anyway. with this one. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Okay. All right, well, let's see this machine working. And I believe we've got Justin over here from Gallagher setting it up for you. Yep. So I might ask him a couple of questions about what he's doing because yep. it looks like rocket science to me. Well, yes. It's just as well we've got these guys. Yes. Well, you showed me a little bit, so it seemed to work, so that's good. Yeah, no, very good. And no, we can let Stephen know he's off the hook in a few minutes. Maybe. The Maybe. <laughs> G'day, Justin. How are you, mate? Good, Tim. How are you? Mate, um, you have a very important job out here today. You're the local territory manager for Gallagher, and your job is to save Steve's life here. Yeah, we're out here today just doing some training and, and set up to make sure the whole uh, the whole new purchase is, is working to the, the way they want it to. Looks like a pretty trick bit of gear, mate, and yeah. uh, it'll run itself once you get it all set up, won't yeah, it? Yeah, 100%. So once we once we have this set up, it'll be able to draft and weigh sheep automatically without any interaction from, from the team here whatsoever. Fantastic. All right, well, take us through the basics of what we need to do to set up one of these auto drafters. And obviously, you guys are here as backup as well. Yeah, absolutely. If everything goes pear shaped or if something goes wrong. Yeah. So, this unit here, uh, pretty simple, runs on 12 or 240 volt and, uh, and compressed air. So, we just connect it up to the, uh, to the system. So, just a simple battery, mate, is just all a, you need. Just a simple battery or 240 volt connection. Uh, all the connections come in the, in the packaging with the product. And uh, yeah, just a compressor. We recommend a, a 12 CFM compressor. We've got one in the, in the yard over there. It's, uh, it's plumbed all the way to here. Then we've got a storage tank and uh, the setup here. So the exit side here, uh, we've got some the new improved gates on there that uh, a bit, allow a little bit more light to come through for movement of animal. They're Dorper approved, I believe. Dorper approved is, is, is the way it works. Uh, we've got integrated way scales built into the system and EID panels here that uh, pick up 100% read range of electronic tag. So we just connect up the communications, Michael, from the from the drafter yep. to the scale. So that's your communications, essentially. And then these are your way bars. Way bars, yep. This one over here is your, is your EID yeah, antenna. Yeah, so yep. on both sides here, there's EID yep. connections. And we just plug that in. So you've only got the three connectors, and we can turn that on. Equipment connections, um, it already understands because of what's connected in what's here, connected. that the auto drafter is, is connected. So then we just put EID reader, it's a panel reader, done. And then we can start a new session based on our weight categories. And we want to draft by weight. Yep. We can draft by current gain, overall gain, list, all of those things. So once you start getting an overall feel with the product, you'll be able to draft into pens of uh, weight gain instead yep. of just weights weight. potentially. So you might be able to use this to make you know forward decisions of like inventory. So when these animals are, are, the, are currently this weight, they're gaining this much weight per day, you might have an end date that you'll be able to supply to your, to your stock agent that, yep. hey, these are gonna be ready around this time frame. So even those TSUs, the samples, you'll be able to sort via all that. You can set up a template in here for that, yep. to set it up permanently. Yep. Um, and then you just come in and select the template and it fills all the data for you. Yeah. Essentially yep. all, the, all the categories.
I think the job's done now. It's working well. It better be. Well, Michael, as we stand in front of your beautiful Kalahari goats here, it's mm. been an absolute privilege to come in and see what you guys are doing. In yep. a matter of a couple of years, you've managed to set up your fences on this property, get your mm. feedlot in place, and put in some really state-of-the-art yards. What are, your, what are your hopes and plans for the operation moving forward? Uh, I think we'll keep going, especially in the goats and the sheep. The dorpers and the goats are well showing showing really good signs. Yep. Um, I think we'll probably back off on the crop on a bit more and concentrate on stock. Yep. Um, yeah, and just keep keep going, probably get a bit bigger in, in both. We've got a thousand head of dorpers and probably two hundred of the stud Kalahari, so yep. we'll we'll try to get bigger in them for sure. And same thing with the stud dorpers will get bigger. And improving the value of your livestock through yep. genetic mm. selection is critical yep. to your operation. Yeah, it is very critical. Yep. Yeah. It's a it's a mind blowing game in bloodlines and and all that to get it right and it's a lot of years to get your genetics right. Yeah, yep. but a once lot you're it. there, you've got good stock, you've got good fencing systems, yep. you're preserving your trees, you're planting more, yep. and you're putting shelters in place. Yep, yep, you can so only you go for it. Yeah, you should be. Yep. Mate, so. fantastic nah. of you to have us out here. Nah, Thank appreciate you very it. much. Yep. And uh, guys, if you want to find out more about this, don't forget timthompson.ag. And don't forget if you like this kind of video, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. Michael? Thank we'll you. We'll be back again next week. Right, thank you.